Welcome to a WoW Classic Iron Man. I completion this series where I play without joining parties, trading or using the auction house. I hope you enjoy. Okay, before I can do anything else, I need to free up this backspace. So we'll be turning in Runeclaw for Darnassus faction. I'm starting at 1657 revered and through the magic of editing I'm now at 3007 which means we got 1350 rep. After a previous video was finished I took a long hard look at Argent Dawn reputation rewards and how to get that reputation and I found I have pretty much three viable ways of doing it. I managed to glitch into Scholomance by game overing my character from jumping from a balcony and as a ghost going through the closed door and I could kill two monsters in there, five rep each, they were elites, for about 50 reputation per hour, which is obviously terrible. That would be Including the drops they drop, the, the Scorch Stones, that would be about 135 hours for Revered, which would uh, enable me to get the 18th slot back. The way number two is doing the Cauldron Cleansing quests at Garon's Withering. It's about 200 rep per hour, which would drop the required hours to about... Uh, Let's say a third of what they were before, including the Scorch Stones, maybe, maybe by, by four. That's still a lot of hours spent grinding mobs that take a lot of time to kill. So my last way, which is time-gated, would be to do invasions. Invasions give five reputation up until the end of Honored. Every monster gives five reputation, so I could just grant that and turn in one quest at the end and complete uh, complete honored and be at revered and have cheaper back. But this all sounds terrible and not at all fun. And actually, if the reward for this is an 18 slot back, then uh, I, I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. The other one alternative is doing 40 times uh, the quest for... Or the thing is you trade for the bug and that's just no. So after checking out in TPC, uh, in the last patch of TPC, you can just straight up buy a 22 slot bag. So I don't think spending so much time grinding for an 18 slot bag uh, is something that I want to do, especially because, uh, as I said, it's not going to be any fun. So I've instead decided to devise a list of stuff I want to do still in vanilla, still do before TPC releases. And it has four points now, and it's completing all combat skills to 300, so maxing all of the combat skills you can see over here. The axes, the crossbows, etc. unarmed. I want them all to be at 300. Next, complete all cooking recipes. I just checked that my recipe tracking add-on only has phase one, so for example it doesn't have the chimera chops, but I will be checking wowhead for that and we can get all of them, I'm pretty sure, except the horde only ones. Next I want to work on and probably can complete every heavy fish of the fishing log. It's something I can just keep working on and even though it's an RNG goal, if I keep fishing, it will probably happen. Uh, I don't strive for the highest weights for the fish. Any weight is okay, so I think that's definitely doable. And the last one, uh, it wouldn't hurt too much if I didn't do it, but it's something I want to do just to be prepared. I want to have at least 1000 gold saved up for the start of Burning Crusade so I can buy the lowest level flying and a flying mount right away. I can fly slow, I just don't want to be cut out from the content if it requires me to fly somewhere. Okay, so with that out of the way, we have a lot of goals to work towards, except those four. We obviously still want to get pets, we obviously still want to get some other stuff, so I think we have the work cut out 
and I can go on and start doing what I want right now. And what it is, it's probably I'm gonna get started on completing all of the cooking recipes in this video. Didn't have to wait very long, pretty much about half an hour. Here's Vendertron 1000 and he will sell me all of these fantastic recipes. So I don't have this one, two, three, four, five, and six, six new cooking recipes obtained from just a little while of waiting. Mr. Mulligan over here will provide us with one more recipe for a mere one gold, eight silver. We can now make a monster omelette. Miss Alandarian Nightsong will give us the recipe for strider stew in exchange for a couple of strider meats and we got ten darnasses reputation so let's learn the recipe and also on the way there i slaughtered some moonkins or moon beasts or whatever they were called and i got five small eggs so that's gonna be useful for the christmas event coming soon so i can make cookies for santa right away for grandfather christmas so he doesn't have to wait for his precious cookies. And lastly, continuing our journey to more cooking recipes, we get the recipe of the caldery for the caldery spider kebab. So let's learn it real quick. And in the shop right here, I bought pretty much every weapon I need to skill up, the low level version. One-handed axe, a dagger, a staff, one-handed sword, two-handed axe and two-handed sword. I didn't buy a gun or a crossbow here because they don't sell it, so I'll have to make a detour to Stormwind. But that's also where we're going now, actually, because I need to get to Hillsbrad Foothills. So I think this method should work for training skills. I didn't test it yet, to be honest. I came here to Altarac Mountains, and what I did was use my mount to jump on top of this roof. And now when I attack this monster, he should be evading constantly, which should... Oh. If they evade, I don't get skill points. That sucks. This is a pretty well-known method, but if you lure a servant of Savine or some other servants in Blasted Lands, you can basically attack them forever, they will never die. They deal a sizable amount of damage, but according to Wowhead comments, Paladins can tank it with Seal of Light, I think it's called, the healing seal. And I can tank it with just my pet, and I'll just have to heal it every, let's say, a minute and a half, like now. I pop a couple mend pets, and it's good to go. And I've already skilled my crossbows from 0 to 239 before I had to go teach a class. And now I'm changing to guns. So I think about slightly over 200 for every um, weapon would be a good starting point over here. The Christmas preparations were really, really, really crazy this year, but I can now log in to World of Warcraft and the Great Father Winter is here, is 26th right now, just barely started, I think it's 1am. So the first order of business is we can talk to one of these goblins here and they'll be selling two recipes we need for gingerbread cookie and for eggnog. And I'm pretty sure these are the last seasonal recipes we need. The gingerbread cookie is here, eggnog is here, and no other recipe requires an event, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, I'll be learning that, and then I'll pick up all the presents, we'll open them, and then I'll do all the event quests. Alright, I think there's five of them total. If not, then this clip will be a total disaster, but let's open them one by one. The ticking present is five preserved Kali and a mechanical Grinch, which will all be very useful, so we can maybe try to take down a harder instance in the next ten days. We'll see. The gaily wrapped present is a snowman kit. 
So this is one of the four companion pets we can get. You can get one each year and it's random. So if you're unlucky, you will get duplicates. And if we're lucky, we can finish this in four years. So let's learn the snowman kit. After I make a screenshot real fast. Let's bind. Oh, missing rig and snowball. Okay, never mind. I got some snowballs. Let's bind the snowman. Look at him. Pretty cute. And that's one more of the event pets completed for the collection log. Let's continue on with opening the gifts. Here's the festive gift, the wand of holiday cheer. The carefully wrapped present will be a Winter Veil cookie that just gives some stamina and spirit. And the gently shaken gift is the Winter Veil rose, which is just food. All right. Since I already had small eggs, I just bought holiday spices and some ice cold milk in the tavern over there. And we can make cookies for Great Father Winter right here because you can use these dwarven braziers as a cooking fire so that definitely is very useful just two more one and two and let's give daddy winter what he wants we got 25 steam wheel cultural reputation which doesn't really matter and if the after well in the pastures gift pack we got and copper bars, so I get stats. Uh, that is one silver. Hmm. And we also got a couple more quests. We have to save Mensa the reindeer, and we have to find the stolen Winter Veil treats. So we will be doing that right away. And that will be about four gold worth of questing. Okay, so it did finally happen. I was AFKing for the most of it, but I think with that hit we get 280 in swords, which means I have every single combat stat at 280 or higher, except Throne, which is a real pain in the ass to train, and I will not be training it here. And I think guns and crossbows because they are ranged weapons and I also have better ways to train them than here. It's very hard to set up with the pet. Never mind. So, as you can see, I have axes, 280, daggers, um, pole arms, staves, swords, 200 axes, 200 swords, and an arm, 280. I will try to max some of them, but 280 I think is good enough to just go into Outland and if I get a weapon I can be relatively okay with it for the time being. I took a pretty long break from this character and actually started enjoying raiding on another server on my quote-unquote main over there, but I decided to come back and throw some knives to skill up Throne. I just hit 200 and we got the recipe for Savory Deviate Delight. So this is one of the recipes I still had missing. Let's learn it now. I think I just a second ago said in the chat that I don't have the recipe yet, but yeah, here we go, about uh, five kills or so apart. So I don't think I will be grinding these monsters further for the squirrel recipe, but I might just throw all my knives here, uh, depending on how long it takes, uh, and maybe it will drop. Couple of kills later, I got the plans for Copper and Chain Vest, which is pretty much the same drop rate. Uh, 5 in 10,000, I want to say. So, it's not exactly unlucky because that's not how math works, but it feels unlucky. Let's continue. I had to scroll a fair bit for this one, but I'm glad I have it in my log. I was talking with this dude here, shout out to Lonely Old Man for talking with me so late in the night. Uh, but I got the Deckhands shirt. It's not very rare or anything, it's like 4% drop rate from the pirates that I moved to here. They also give Ratchet reputation, so why not? Uh, but it's better, I think, than the fine cloth shirt, so I'm taking this and uh, 
yeah, we got a new shirt. Alright, it happened. Your skill in Throne has increased to 300, so this is our next combat skill maxed. I was pretty sure I'm not gonna max Throne, it was not pleasant to train this skill. Uh, every time you want to attack you have to click on this as opposed to every other weapon where your character just continues on attacking. Uh, I've killed many 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 of these South Seas and if I check the number of daggers I have left I've thrown about 750 of them just for the last skill up from 299 to 300. So about a thousand six hundred for thousand six hundred and fifty from one to max, which is pretty cheap but very time consuming. Uh, we didn't get the squirrel recipe, so I think I'm gonna switch up my equipment a little bit and you'll see where I will go next. After doing a little bit of research, I found that Kimarok chops require black and glare so I can't get them, and Thistle Tea is only sold to rogues, or a reward from quests only for rogues. So I only need two cooking recipes for all the cooking recipes I can get, and this is one of them for Lock, Frenzy, Delight. So let's buy it, let's learn it, and let's go to Hillsbrad Foothills, because a quest there will reward me with my last cooking recipe. This took a little bit of time because there were people killing the snap jaws and I really 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 didn't want to disturb them but I had to. I got my 10 turtle meat and let's turn it in for the recipe of soothing turtle bisque whatever that is. My culinary knowledge isn't too great as you can see and after we learn it this is the last cooking recipe in WoW Classic that I could obtain on this character. So thank you for watching. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one where the plan is to skill up even more weapon skills, maybe get a pet, maybe two, uh, and hopefully work on a little bit of blacksmithing so we can make those mithril spurs.